everybody, and welcome to Red Wings Rant, where tirades and impassion please for your Detroit Red Wings finally have a home! Woo! Let's go! Alright. So, Mike is coming, I swear. We talked about it. Um, I think so. He might be. Maybe not. Maybe not at all. Who knows? I sent him an invite. Let's see what happens. Um, Jared thrown out there. Mike's a Teletubbies on ice. Could very well be. Uh, but I do. I have. I have a podcast buddy today. Let's uh, let's share it out. Cause I I thought this was very interesting. I thought this would be something. I'm pretty sure we could steal from the Red Wings. But let's let's find out. Uh, and then I will say hello to all the fine folks. What's going on, Jib? What's going on, Choo Choo? But uh, yeah, it was uh, Derek alone earlier earlier today, and I'm I'm pretty sure I have the audio shared and all that fun stuff. The energy in the room. Uh, I can't sleep at night. I'm watching. You know, the, just the reality of the Washington game gives you a little emotional spark. This is what it's about the time of year. We haven't been here in eight years. Not only have we gotten here our guys have worked their butts off to get here and we've earned it and i'm excited to see how we handle it so the energy in the room so that that's our boy derek we have another one of our good friends just came aboard his name's mike mike what is going on mike we just went over uh derek's mr lalone coach lalone in his uh presser statement earlier today that you could find on red wings twitter um Kind of, kind of funny. It's uh, it comes back to back of um, like a torts blow up, and then a a torts like <laughs> uh, really passionate. And uh, look, I, I don't want I don't want Tortorella to coach our team, but but there is something uh, to be said for the dramatic delivery of his philosophy on winning, the love of his team. And everything that was said, and then we got, um, you know, and then, then we got this guy, who was, he was, was kind of like, you know, I'm gonna, uh, you know, went in, and we haven't been here for eight years, and it's it's fun. I can't sleep at night. Well, uh, I did not listen to the press conference, Matt. Um, Do you want me to queue it up again? I still have it. How long is it? It's like a minute. Yeah, let's do it real quick. The energy in the room. Uh, I can't sleep at night. I'm watching, you know, the, just the reality of the Washington game gives you a little emotional spark. This is what it's about the time of year. We haven't been here in eight years. Not only have we gotten here, our guys have worked their butts off to get here and we've earned it. And I'm excited to see how we handle it. So the Mike, we, we worked our tuckuses off. I don't, uh, I'm going to say there's uh, arguably three weeks where I didn't see any work being done. Uh, hey, I yeah, that's what he's true. talking about. <laughs> I Listen. He's talking about the that... coaching staff. <laughs> <sighs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they they uh, they weren't they weren't in these comp like, OK, the past couple games, even when we lost. Right. It was still I was like, OK, there's the old effort again. Right. They're keeping it close. Um, they're trying to keep up with teams that have, you know, far superior talent. Thank you, Dan B, for all saying all I hear is wah, 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 wah. <laughs> um, and I can't kill them for having, you know, inferior talent, right? But you could still like manage effort, and that losing streak that they had, like, you know, the polarizing play of this team where it seems like, hey, maybe they're world beaters. And it's like, oh, my God, they're the worst team in the NHL. Um, it's not 50-50 because they're on the outside of the playoffs looking in. So it's more, you know, leaning towards ineptitude. And if you're going to say that, yeah, you know, I feel like we have Larkin, we have Raymond, we have Cider, we have Kane. You know, it's not a team completely devoid of talent. So if it's not a talent issue, what happened? Is it the coach? Because I, I don't know what he's really contributing. I, I, Matt, I'm not enamored of him saying things, you know, like, yeah, you guys should just be happy to be here. No one at the start of the season thought we'd be this close. 
you know, th those are the kind of things like gigantic losing, uh, you know, slides, um, comments like that. Those are the ones, it, you know, I don't want to kill him too much for not being like, a, you know, you don't everybody who's successful does not have the Dan Campbell personality. That's OK. But I don't I don't feel confident that this guy is the one who's going to take us across to the promised land. I, you know, I didn't even want to go here. And I, I saw this like an hour ago, like before we started recording and it, it did. I just wish it hadn't come out today because <laughs> everything that you said, if you haven't seen torts yet, which is um, again, I, I, I don't, I don't really want torts a part of this team. No, but, but um he did just pretty much tell it like it is he, like he he brought in the passion again there's a lot of drama i i think certainly torts has gone through some sort of acting practice or he's just a huge fan of film uh because he he brought it the, the hesitations in the right <clears throat> spot and, I, and i'm folding in both of these press conferences the post loss uh where he called his team soft First question: If you guys haven't seen it, like how do you how do you feel your put your team played tonight? Uh, you know, John. I don't know. Do they call him John or Torts? And he just soft. <laughs> just that was his response. <laughs> and then and then uh, you know then he goes on a tirade about how he's going to learn who his team is, or he's learning who his team is. And then this press conference today kind of felt like somebody in upper management was like, "Cool it." All right, you already kicked out one of our prospects uh, for the fear of you, and he's killing it right now for Team USA. Could you? Could you not? <laughs> so today kind of felt like he was taking a step back, but there were points where he doubled down, and he was like, "No, I, I still mean everything I said." He's like, "I love this team," but he's like, "The last thing you could do," and this is where I, I wanted to take this because of exactly what you said about Derek's point here was just. People said we weren't supposed to be here, but that's baloney. He's like, we're here now. You have to play like you belong. And I, I just like, he's right. As much as, as much as I don't want towards to ever touch this team, that message was right. That message that he's given the flyers team and he's going to see now, like he's being open and honest uh, with the media. I don't know if this is the same Lalone that, you know, the boys get in the locker room that we see in the media of Lalone, but you can't, you can't expect that the message is going to change between the media and into the locker room, right? Because it's brutally honest with, with torts with Lalone, yeah. you kind of have to play the game with like, Oh man, I hope like Chewy said here, him talking about energy and not really expressing any energy himself. That was That's a bit for comment of the episode. Thank you, Chewy. Actually, Nailed it. Um, but that's that's kind of like the game you have to play, right? Like, and some people could criticize this take right now and say, you're not in the locker room, you don't know what's going on, or I can't believe you actually think Lalone does this. And the, just the thing is, is we've seen a team that got pretty soft when it started to really matter, when we were these games really started to cook. We, um it's in nut crunch time focus, man but yeah nut crunch time uh we lost to arizona eight to one how about last year's uh games against ottawa <laughs> right so th there's there's evidence and there's the alone we see i'm just i didn't even want to talk about this today but alone no, forced I, my hand it just uh again i <sighs> I'm trying not to be, uh, you know, it's easy to make jokes at his expense. He's a, he's an easy target, right? I can't, I can't kill him for getting destroyed by Colorado. That's a really good team. And we were on the road, right? But I, getting completely outclassed by a depleted Coyotes team, like post deadline, it's, you know, those are the last, like the losses that I'm like, I feel like you're losing sleep for a different reason because you're about to lose your job, not because you're so excited about, you know, this Red Wing team being the last team to not make the playoffs. So, yeah, I, I'm not going to kill him for losing to the Caps or, you know, that Florida game. Those were tough games. Uh, I just, 
I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, I mean, I'm glad we are a little less nauseated because that, that Tampa team, man, they are way better than us, but somehow we got four goals and came away with a win. Um, so I, I don't know. I guess I can, you know, I'll try and marinate on that fact uh, before we get completely annihilated by New York. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad you picked this comment from Crimson because I was going to read this one too. But um, if you're on the podcast, he's saying, um, I don't know. I hate that Derek plays Petrie as much as he does, but Stevie is the one who brought the damn guy. So I don't know who to blame. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, Crimson, there's so much chicken and egg, like who to blame with this team. <laughs> it's, it, it's like impossible. Um, you know, do, do we blame, do we blame Steve? Do we blame the players? Like, do we blame the coach? There's, there's a lot of blame to go around when you, you know, play as poorly as you have. Um, and I don't even know. I, I don't even know. I like how much can we kill him for Petrie? Petrie did, Matt. I know you said that he almost missed, but he did save a goal. Um, in the Tampa game, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I will, I'll bring up our our three heroes, our unlikely heroes from uh, Tampa, and what that means for us going forward. Um, but yeah, I, I did want to highlight Crimson's point because I I think it's I think it's critically important right now. Because this season has been such a roller coaster. How easy was it last night to see us two nights ago? Two nights ago, see us beat Tampa and immediately start like, okay, now we just need this last year. And then the capsules. And then we're right back in it. Like, it's <laughs> like, so when I call it a roller coaster, I'm just like, you know, you lose and it's the end of the world. You win and we're, you know, I we've got our, it. We're the best team. Are, are gonna pull it up uh but but like what you're saying with doing the math you know about us uh essentially having to back into the playoffs um figure out guys was it the 2014 uh seattle seahawks who but walk you know uh moon walked into the playoffs at seven and nine because that's what we're aiming for right now that's what it looks like <laughs> i like the moon walk into the playoffs um yeah and so i guess the, the point i'm trying to make is just like let's not lose sight of what we've seen this team do a few times this season, right? Like the last thing we want to see is like somebody kill it here in these last seven games. And we're like, that's, that's our guy, you know, Petrie, Petri, what if, what if he shows up, you know, a couple of hat tricks to end the season. And then we're like, we did it. We, we couldn't have done it without Jeff Petrie. And, um, you know, it kind of be, it kind of, it would kind of be the same thing if Florida was like, no, we have to pay, Alex Lyon out the behind because he went six one and one to get us into the playoffs. And then we almost yeah. won the Stanley cup and then, you know, look at where Florida is now. So it's just keep your head. We have to remind ourselves to keep our head screwed on tight. But, but the reason that needs to be said is because I do think we need to turn the attitude of this show and let's be a little bit more positive. Cause you know what? Oh, I we, thought you we were going to say that you and I have to eat some crow because Sherratt has arguably been our second best defenseman. <laughs> um, I, I don't actually, know if I'm he's ready actually to contributed a lot of positive to that, plays. but he's definitely not in the bottom three. Very true. Yeah. Um, before we get into the stats, I think we did have a couple comments in here. Um, I really like Newsy Grew every time he says something because it's just a treat to see that thumbnail. Yeah. Um, everyone gets a slice of blame pie. Um, Hell in reference yeah. to, do we blame the GM, the coach, or the players? Um, Jared uh, agreeing that I should let that one marinate. Thank you, Jared. Um, I thought I had a good one from Dan B that I really liked. Oh, Jim Johnson does want to remind us. The critics at the start of the year oh. had us finished with 85 points. Yeah, you know, that's uh, right out of Derek Lalonde's quote book here if we lose to the Rangers. So, you know. Well, they didn't, you know, and plus, don't forget, we still got to earn three more points. So, uh, and exceed it by one um, we, to go, to, you know, it's, so we still got some work to do. Jim. Right. It's only a seven game losing streak. That's <laughs> at this point. That's all it is. We're that pretty good under those. those predictions. We've yeah. done it before. We've managed um, a couple of those. So with possible. some harrowing uh, words here. Don't think Newsy's going anywhere, but I think assistant coaches could change. Um, I know. Dan, I don't I think, think. Well, I don't think we are making the point that he needs to get canned. I think. I think there's 
there's no there's no reason to do that there there it's like this is more like a call to action this is like a let's get real man this isn't just fun in games let's let's get our shit together it's my kids right out the door you know like does that mean that um that... if he doesn't if Iserman doesn't do something with lalone that he thinks this team is exactly where it should be and that they they didn't it's one of those in so facto moves so if you don't if you don't fire anybody then you're like well they did get 86 points which is one more than the prognosticator said for us so mission accomplished hmm so if we go especially if we end up like above this 85 points that we're now we're kind of landing on right now is like the preseason number yeah um which I thought I thought we were saying I thought we were saying like ninety or something, but I'll go, we'll go I with eighty five. We yeah. um, um, like anything just... above eighty five, then is is alone, right? Because you're basically looking <laughs> at the analytics of the last three years, yeah. and you're projecting some forward movement by some of the younger players, and then you say this is where they will end up, and then if they do better than that, it's all coaching. So that's the only thing you can't really, right? Yeah. Um... The other, what was the other one I had for you, Matt? Um, performance art. I have a scary one for you too. I still say he says. I still say even if we make it, there has to be major changes to this team. Performance art. You know what scares me about that is uh, our books are not as wide open as you think. Um, we have a lot of money invested in you know halls, petries, two two extra goalies, and it's not the goalies that you want. Um, so. We'd have to make significant trades and find ways to uh, get rid of some of the poopy contracts, especially because we'd have to pay Cider, Raymond, and if you want to retain him, Kane, uh, significant raises. So I, too, think that we would need major changes, but I don't know if we have the finance to do it because we made some uh, some poopy defensive moves. Oh, the other one I was going to throw in there, Matt, was Red Wings fan club with an Obi-Wan saying, well, hello there. No. Um, <laughs> i <laughs> <laughs> love that oh um, you had one for jared though sorry yeah jared throwing out there uh flyers minus 17 capitals oh, minus 25 well, right to my favorite uh, set. jared that's a bid for comment of the show i love gold <laughs> differential uh where are we at yeah here we go uh i'm gonna blow this up a little bit on my screen uh let's let's talk about the standings right so we beat the lightning um I don't know if we, I mean, do we want to pull up highlights? I, I have some, I, I don't know if we want to look at Petrie's almost whiff and a puck rolling into the net, um, which by the way, I'd love to discuss what that would have done <laughs> to the media, to like to the media, to Red Wings Twitter. But um, to, to, uh, to Jared's point. <clears throat> yeah. I think, uh, I think right now, if you went up and down the list, there's two teams that deserve to be a little bit higher. Uh, Pittsburgh <laughs> Penguins who I've called out all season as, as our, our trouble spot who are a plus one getting great goaltending man if only they could get this team with eric carlson of getty malkin Sidney crosby to put some goals in the back of the net <laughs> um, uh, which by the way quick, I, think, I think it's their power play is the the big issue but go ahead mike that is unbelievable that that number is not right right the capitals because jared said negative 25 your stat shows negative 35 Oh, this one's from, uh, I think Jared said, I wish I could edit uh, YouTube comments. That's right. Uh, this is straight from NHL.com right before we started recording. Uh, so, yeah, they're a minus uh, 35. I mean, the Islanders are a minus 27. Dude. The trade at a plus two is, man, How we are in the nice. How ass kicked and lost green it, it's negative. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Jesus. When they <laughs> lose, they lose. We are Nigel out. Yeah, now you know why Torts is so angry with the Flyers and a minus 17. <laughs> um, Come on, man. We can catch this, right? We got better goaltending than them. I Come on. I, I mean, I'm not. I Even last week, I wasn't counting us out. I, I said last week, um, you're you. we are so lucky that our race is against the Flyers, the Capitals, the Islanders, and then the Penguins who just, man, if they could figure, if they could figure one aspect of their game out, they'd be fine. <laughs> Um, they would definitely overtake us, no problem. Uh, and they're only three points back. That that is insane to me that the Penguins are only three points back. If you're ignoring them, 
man, well, it, we have a huge game against Pittsburgh. You lose that game to Pittsburgh, floop. <laughs> um, Holy I know we want to touch on the standings, but I also do. You have a slide. Mine's taking a minute to load. That just shows our upcoming games. Yeah, man, oh, we're just cool. rolling right through this. This is this part was supposed to take a half hour. Um, um <laughs> here's what's coming up. Because what we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games left. Um, here for for all the podcast listeners who uh, aren't on uh, yeah, let's on throw YouTube, the teams let, up Let's here. do that. So we'll come back to the standings in a second. But with our seven games left, the Red Wings mm-hmm. uh, have uh, the Rangers at home this Friday, seven o'clock. Uh, Mike and I will both be missing that game. Um, watch Tim, Robinson, Tim Robinson, baby. baby. Yeah. Oh, jinx by me, Coke. <laughs> um, April 7th, we're at home uh, versus Buffalo. April 9th, really hoping I get some free ticket offers from uh, my job again. Uh, home against Washington again. We just played the game uh, two episodes ago. Biggest game of the season. There it is right there. Second or no, that'll be the biggest game in the season at that point. Yeah. With, um, at that point, five games to go. Then you're at Pittsburgh. You're at Toronto, who is good. They have a spot. They I don't I don't think uh if we go back to the standings, let me just jump. We'll we'll make some uh decisions here. Uh we'll we'll determine if the Maple Leafs will have to worry about their spot. No, they have six points on the Lightning, and they're four points behind the Panthers. I think they are pretty solid. Ooh, they do have two games on the Panthers. Oh man. I guess you would rather be home uh against the panthers so but at that point they should have it figured out right no i yeah. guess not no never mind no that doesn't make sense because if they're fighting if they're making a play for it and then they're just inching closer and closer so there's a good chance that this game against toronto is like life and death for toronto who is deciding whether or not they're going to be <laughs> four games at home or four yeah. games on the road against a very tough florida panthers team um... who's losing a lot right now but i mean come on um, and then Matt, you get the biggest scares home and death. home since Ottawa last season. My scares God, scares me to death. Anybody looking at these last two games against Montreal as gimmies is yeah. out of their mind. I mean, Montreal just didn't they just destroy Washington or who did they who did they just blow up uh, the other night? But Mike, how 2023 2024 Red Wings. How Red Wings is it going to be for us to have like four games up on Washington or four points up on Washington and we've got two games against Montreal and we lose in regulation in both and they're God forbid both blowouts and <laughs> like uh, I could I've been at those Montreal games at LCA when it's a blowout they are so mean I I man. <laughs> If I was there, I might um, consider crying. Uh, it, it'd be a rough one. I'd be that little kid that Mickey Redman was talking to a week ago in the Florida game. Can I ask, how many of these games are you confident in? Like a Red Wing victory. And I mean this for our beloved commenters and for you, Matt. I I feel very confident the Rangers game is a loss. Buffalo, I don't know, man. They're, they're pretty hungry and they're mean. I don't want to play them at all. Um, the Caps, I hope we get a lead. Uh, I mean, I was in attendance for that eight, that beautiful eight to three game, which was so much fun. Um, but I, I don't know. I, the, the only game that we're looking Pittsburgh, at right on the road, <laughs> Toronto, no Montreal. I, I don't know. Like the season depends on this Lalone. season depend. Well, I, I, you know, none of me and the boys, uh, we just couldn't sleep at all last night. So, uh, you know, we blew uh, the April 15th game, and then we lost so, so much sleep. We went ahead and lost both games and uh, missed the playoffs. So we're going to be losing a lot of sleep this offseason uh, working at Family Dollar because uh, those shifts start really early. So, <laughs> um, You kind of I, – I, this was the joke I had queued up, but I think it's pretty obvious oh, now. But yeah. I was going to say the only game I'm looking at right now that I'm very confident we're going to win – is April 1st against Tampa Bay, which is done. I don't, I can't look at these seven games and confidently say, oh, well, yeah. we'll chalk that one up. But the other thing too, I don't want to be super negative here because I can't say that any of these are absolute losses. 
I just think that there's a narrative and storyline attached to every single one of these seven games that this is not done until April 16th at 10 o'clock. We will not know what's happening with this team <laughs> until 10 o'clock uh, on the 16th. I, uh, we got some hot comments coming in. Red Wings fan club saying, uh, well, it all uh, makes sense now. Uh, they just, uh, they haven't been sleeping. Um, <laughs> Well, apparently they keep bringing up the the flu in every game now, and they're like, "Well, don't forget they went on that losing streak, but everybody was sick." So Do they really have the flu, or is it like when you didn't study for the test and then your tum tum hurts right before school's starting? Yeah. Um, Mike, we were all set on depth. It didn't matter if we had the flu. Remember the trade deadline? We have depth. We're fine. We can handle anything. Remember? Yeah, I don't we know could if you remember. Four I remember. And we're we fine. Can bring, we could call up four lines from our yeah. minor league teams. So I don't yeah, know. We're fine in Grand Rapids. It's a big deal. We should encourage more diarrhea from this. Yeah. Team. Um, remember? <laughs> Come on, our GM, Mike. He's, and uh, Derek he Hand with no a bid for a uh, comment of the episode saying, Just got here. Are the wings good this week? I'm losing track. <laughs> 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 um, they were good uh, Monday. That we're, was fun. We're in healthy spirits. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm I'm feeling more jokey, more happy. I think uh, last week was rough. Everybody had to listen to me, Mike, for 50 minutes. Wow, whining about how you? terrible we are. Well, you know what's fun, guys, is uh, I was not available for that episode. I was at the um, uh, uh, Joe Para comedy show, but Matt and I did get a text from our our beloved aunt who said uh, she really enjoyed that last episode, and uh, I didn't have the heart to remind her that. You know, it was only one of us, um, dear aunt. So I'm glad you enjoyed listening to Matt for 50 minutes, which you I'm can a little... do at any time if you just call him. Matt loves to hear himself talk. So. <laughs> um, a little bummed she didn't realize that uh, there, were, there was only one of us there, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, um, Dan B. This is um, a really good comment. Oh, go yeah. ahead. No, he's just saying seriously not confident about any of those games. I know, Dan. They've broken us. Yeah, They've conditioned us to just be leery. And then eventually disappointed. And they, they just played a really, they played really well against Tampa. All right. Um, again, I, I, Tampa looks a full, you know, leg above us. And I don't just mean in the standings. Like when you watch the on ice product, like, wow, their superstars are really super duper stars. Yeah. Um, like Cooch and Stamkos were going ham. Um, and because I'm stealing every broadcast, uh, <laughs> I couldn't watch the Detroit one. I had to watch the Tampa one. And the Tampa broadcasters were impressed with the Red Wings. And they said, you know, the Red Wings are giving up a lot of puck possession. You know, they were really excited. What was that? Four to five minutes where the Red Wings didn't touch the puck. Yep. And he said, even though we're controlling the puck, we being, you know, the Tampa broadcast representing Tampa, um, the Red Wings are still bottling up any pass that Tampa tries to make in the middle of the ice. Um. So even though they were losing that possession battle, they were still very frustrated at what the Red Wings are doing defensively. So as frustrated as I was watching that game, as frustrated as I'm sure you guys were, like, God damn it, just get the puck. Um, outside of, I think, Cider having basically played that whole four minutes because he was exhausted, <laughs> he couldn't get off the ice, we couldn't make a line change, the Red Wings kind of drew that up on purpose they're like yeah go ahead and control the boards you're not going to do anything in the middle so i guess it worked it's pretty obvious mike they were just sweepy they were so oh, sweepy. oh no matt mm. don't say sweepy <laughs> andy tired <laughs> did you see that instagram reel i sent you uh, the uh the pilot who's like well what do we oh yeah, to yeah. take off right now <laughs> that yeah. was I know that was fake, but that made my day. Um, I don't know why I brought that up. Uh, but yeah, Dad B, uh, um, you're right there. And I, I think this is this is one thing, though, I think it, I think is good is when we got when were we at our most confident? And I think in that episode, I even mentioned this. But I said uh, the thing that feared that I feared most was how confident we were in the Red Wings right after we beat Chicago. We recorded later that week in the first 20 minutes of that show. That's what we celebrated. And then we talked about how scared I was that we're too confident. Now we're right back in it. 
now we're in that end of you know 2023 start of January comes in you're like i don't know it's not going great and that's what we that's the energy we need that's the fan energy that gets us the win we just need to be a, a like a a bubble that's about to pop of frustration and you know we got to siphon some of the air out of that bub out of that bubble i feel like that's we're where we're about, most successful. We're about an hour and 15 minutes mentally as a Red Wing fan base of uh, Full Metal Jacket when they're talking about having the thousand yard stare. That's how it feels like <laughs> we're at right now. We're in the shit. We've been in the shit. <laughs> These losing streaks and this broken psyche about, my God, this team could conceivably just go 0 7 to close the year. If that's in your brain, then that's where I'm at. It's probably not going to happen, but it's like, oh, they've just they've broken me. They've broken me. Uh, speaking of an hour and 15 minutes, uh, we have a little bit of business to take care of real quick. So don't go anywhere, but we have a quick ad we need you guys to check out. Let's go. It's not an hour and 15 minutes, I swear. <laughs> the action never ends at DraftKings Sportsbook, especially coming up this spring. With tons of ways to bet on all your favorite sports, you can fuel, fuel your fandom and feel the heat of the season like never before. Plus, right now in DraftKings Sportsbook, we're giving new customers a risk-free bet up to $1,000. That's right. Make your first bet up to $1,000. And if it doesn't win, you'll get another shot at cash later. You can throw down on all the major action for baseball, golf, MMA, and more. Plus, with same-game parlays, spreads, money lines, over-unders, and props, your betting options feel endless. Red Wings uh, have some pretty tough games coming up. Who knows? Maybe uh, maybe that just means the odds will be that much tighter. And if you put some money down on your favorite Red Wings team to win, which I'm sure you'd all agree, you know maybe things could go your way. Best of all, DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. You can deposit and withdraw with your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code THPN. Make your first deposit and get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. That's promo code THPN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Uh, Jared reminding us. Yeah, who sent our uh, who sent our uh, commenters uh, the show notes? Because how'd they know we were doing Rasmussen next? That was really good. <laughs> uh, Jared throwing out there, Rasmussen injured. Not having him against New York is not good. Um, yeah, this has been this has been crazy. And to think too, we were like, I don't know, maybe maybe an inch or two, one direction or another. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, we're not going to know like what happened with Larkin. And of course they love their little secrets just in case somebody goes after Larkin's leg. But man, the, I mean, the season was almost over with that one. Um, big oh, Rass. Is, you mean the puck to the knee puck? Yeah. Puck to the knee for, for yeah. Larkin. Um, yeah. Big Rass has struggled a little bit. Um, I would say, <sighs> God, you know, it's tough. It's tough to put anybody who's not Dylan Larkin on the list of must have. Um, Cause <laughs> I, I see say, how they perform. I, I understand the sentiment. I understand the sentiment of the concern, but he's been a ghost for like two weeks. Yeah. Um, the only guys I'm worried about missing games. You absolutely cannot lose Larkin, Cider, Kane. Raymond. Raymond. Anyone else? I'm like Raymond. Hey. That's that's my. I know Jerry. How did I almost forget Raymond? I, I don't know why that was the fourth name I said. But anyway, we, yeah. we need a we need a drop of uh, Brad Garrett saying Raymond. <laughs> Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody get that reference? Am I am I old? Uh, Jim yeah. does throw out there. Have some faith, boys. I think you know what that that's as good a time as any to call up. I think that's the perfect schedule. word. Uh, because that's having a confidence with no me. evidence, Jim. <laughs> that is the yes. perfect word. Yeah. Uh, hope and faith. Uh, but no, I, I do I do agree with Jim. I you're you're I know where you're coming from. I think you're right, but I, I agree. I'm I'm on Jim's side. Because look at our strength, the schedule, Mike, it's back in our favor. Yeah. Um Except for Philly, but you know Philly's such a dumpster fire right now. I, 
I don't, I, this will be it, right? This will be the test. We just saw. Uh, let's 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 remember the press conferences of Derek Lalonde and Torts and see where these two hey, teams go. Um, but please, uh, please don't forget that as you're looking at this table, Matt. Um, and if you look at Montreal and their easiest opponents, looks like they got two cupcakes against the Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that's why they're. <laughs> That's why they're not at the top of the list. Um, no, but uh, going through this, hey, Columbus, they've got a pretty good shot at that uh, first pick there. Um, where's my head going? Right. Uh, we want to talk about the teams we're, we're going up against. So for anybody uh, listening to the podcast, let's let's set this up. We're looking at the strength, the schedule list, uh, and kind of just talking about when we were looking at the standings, any of those teams we were keeping an eye on. Um, Buffalo, Pittsburgh. Two of the toughest schedules remaining. Um, I mean, out of the league, they're fifth and seventh toughest. In our conference, they are the third and fourth. Uh, Pittsburgh's got Boston, Toronto, Tampa, and Nashville in their last seven. Um, man, then they got three super easy ones. The Islanders, the Capitals, and then the Red Wings. So they're they're all set up just to steal Mike's joke again. Um, <laughs> then the Caps. Caps also three tough games there, Boston, Carolina, Tampa. And then, um, you know, this is kind of funny. I mean, their competition for this wild card spot, like Washington, I would say has it just as tough as us. Like with these teams that are sniffing, sniffing both of our back ends, sniffing our rear ends here to catch up. Uh, they do have a nice easy one against uh, Ottawa. And then we, we both have Buffalo to end the season. We both have, pittsburgh to end the season of course we're going to face each other uh but uh, washington kind of gets the nod here with eight games remaining maybe that's part of how their schedule is tougher uh because they're, they're also including a flyers game in there um us the big difference maker on this list is is the two against montreal yeah um i was just trying to pull up like the uh the way the schedule pans out for Washington. Um, Cause it's not just that you're going to be playing, you know, like, okay. So, you know, they'll say like the Tampa game's really tough. I just wanted to see where it was on the schedule to see if Tampa is even going to give a hoot. Um, Cause they're you know, going to comfortably make it. Um, yep. So it's like the third to last game for them. Uh, but Washington is going to have to be balls to the wall. Um, Cause I got a back to back with the Pittsburgh and Carolina this week. Uh, Thursday, Friday. And then they get a cupcake against Ottawa. Then game of the century um, against our beloved Detroit. DTE Energy. Light the lamp, Red Wings. And then they get Buffalo on a, on a Thursday. And Matt, to close the season, this is Woo! pretty cool. They get a back-to-back -back Boston. And then to play for their playoff lives the day after they get the Flyers. Oh, wow. That's yeah. crazy. Oh man, um, I mean that. I, I don't think I put in the right amount of uh, enthusiasm, but that that is a hell of a last game of the season, uh, especially if them go back and forth with that third spot <laughs> in the Metro. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be one of those things, right? Like we just as long as that one doesn't go to overtime, and we're watching that game, we need a blowout in that game, right? At that point, we're going to be fighting the Flyers and the Caps. And if one of them makes it into the, you know, that third spot in the Metro, then we just got to beat the other one. You know, like it's, it's going to be that kind of <laughs> conversation, but man, yeah. is there a game more destined to go to overtime than Washington <laughs> versus Philly at the end of the I, season? Oh I my do, God. Uh, I do want to put in perspective, like the flyers path. All right. So they get another day off tomorrow and then Friday, Saturday, they get back to back Buffalo and Columbus. Oh man, I know. Uh, and then they get a couple days off. Then they get the Jabronis in Montreal, and then they're going to be playing New York, which at this point will probably be coasting. Uh, and then they get the Devils, and then they close out with their game of the century um, against Washington. So, whoo! I am uh, pretty envious of this layout. Um, they only have the one back to back. And then uh, it's like they can kind of gear up for that final showdown against Washington. So it looks pretty nice to be a Flyer fan. Um, well, I, I kind of, I, 
you you are right and i think it it brings more credence to the point i want to make right now in looking at this and you have one one game left with a tough opponent at home that would be incredibly huge with the i mean you're going to right you're going to look at the strength the schedule thing you're kind of like crossing teams <laughs> off the list of who are your toughest remaining Clearly, it's the Rangers is our toughest, but we do have them at home. There is nothing the Red Wings should want more than one point out of this game on Friday. One stinking point. You want to win them all. I know. But this is like your hardest game. You're at home. Play a tight one. Rely on your goaltender. I think they already said Alex Lyons in. Lyons in. Keep them protected. Don't keep giving up these odd man rushes. Tighten that SHIT up. I guess Sprong's back in, so you've got a higher shooting percentage, so you're not going to need a ton of chances. But, man, ask that team. Play it tight. Get to overtime. Get that point. Because if you can cross that game off your list, have six games remaining, and, again, technically your toughest game left is Toronto, which, again, there, there's a very good chance that that game won't even matter to Toronto at that point. They'll, their position could be solid in place if Florida wins a couple of games here. So that being the case, you you get a point out of this. I am going to be to the moon. It'll be the last time this season that I will allow myself to be thrilled with a single point in a game. Because the Rangers, god damn do they have it this year. I just, I know it's, maybe we should just be talking about like, all right, don't be too upset. World's not over if you lose in regulation to the to the Rangers, which I think we're all set up for that. But I just want to have this conversation. I just want to have this this notated. And I know nobody's, nobody disagrees. Like, yes, get a point against the Rangers. But if you're going to base it off of your hardest games left and then have, you know, I, I mean, let's be honest. We're talking about, even though the Capitals are on this list, we're talking about a bunch of teams with negative goal differentials besides Pittsburgh. And maybe by the time we face Pittsburgh, they will have a negative goal differential. You're facing those teams that give up a ton of goals. You've got, you've got some opportunity here. You've got those last two games of the season that do scare the bejesus out of me. You got one of them at home, and they are still the stinky Canadians. You could still get some wins there. So that, I'm just saying... <laughs> this will be the last game of the season all i want is a point well <clears throat> i don't know if this uh i feel like this makes me feel a little bit better um looking at what the rangers have left so they have tonight's bloodbath against new jersey um which are already winning by the way and then they play us friday and then after that my god what a cupcake schedule um you know they get that canadians game Island, like every other day, they don't even have back to backs. This is uh, really nice. The schedule makers who did this for the Rangers, so they get every other day Canadians, uh, Islanders, Flyers, Islanders, and then they close out against Ottawa. So probably all their guys won't be playing that game either. Um, so I, I don't know, tongue in cheek, because this Red Wing team, I hope, right, they're going to continue that effort that we've seen the past couple days. This is their last tough game. I, I don't I feel like they could just run right over the Islanders. I'm not impressed by them at all. Um, Flyers, I feel like they'll buzz uh, through them. So this kind of feels like if they want to kick their feet up and then just win, you know, go four and zero next week, and then you know rest up against Ottawa. Eh, I could see them maybe you know being a little surprised on Friday. So maybe maybe that makes you feel a little bit better there the way their schedule is laid out. Yeah, and there has there have been you know. There ha there's there's been some or there's go I'm sorry, there's going to be some real opportunity for the Rangers to just solidify their position here because they're still fighting, you know, Carolina for that top spot in the Metro and they could still go for the president's trophy. So point I'm trying to make is they have a bunch of home games left, too. So this will be this will take them down to five games left, I think, after they play us. And four of those for the Rangers are at home. So I think 
I Mike, this is a great point that you you brought up because I think uh, I think it does at least paint this nice picture for the Rangers where it's like they can give up one, and the Red Wings absolutely can't. Right, so it's like you, they they got they got to dig in, they got to do this. They're the home team. They're the team that's got to put on the effort in front of the paying fans. But I'll say it again. This will be the first and the last time this season, unless it's like, you know, we're up against Montreal and we just need one point to make it to the playoffs. But this will be the last time of the season. I will allow myself to be pleased with an overtime game. I don't even need to win it. But that that is Mike. That that's, that's you talk about you comment the of the you talk about comment of the podcast. That might be that might be point of the season to bring up the Rangers easy schedule to to end the year. Um I did want to touch on um because we had a couple of people like uh Jared, Jim, um talking about Debrinkit needing to step up a little bit here in uh, nut crunch time. Uh Debrinkit needs his eyes checked. He's hit more iron than on the net the last three months. Um he leads the league and hitting posts and crossbars. And Dan B with some more harrowing news. Um <laughs> harrowing news comment of the episode. In the last month, Sedin has more goals than Debrinkit. Matt, sure enough, if you go to the game logs, uh, in the last month looks like one, two, three, four, five for Zadina. That's yeah, you know, that's all right. Okay, we'll go to Debrinkit. One, one, <laughs> five to one. Not good. Especially if we're uh, looking about it, uh, price per goal, man. It's uh, much, much Oof. more expensive for it to bring it. Versus, yeah, that's uh, that's a hefty one. Um, Jared, give us uh, give us some updates here on who the players that were ejected on uh, uh, ejected from the Devils Rangers game. Um, could be good news for us. Maybe some names uh, won't be playing on Friday. We'll have a little bit of a an advantage. Yeah, Panarin likes to fight, lines. right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Is uh, Shesterkin like to fight? Yeah, I'd probably suspend him for the rest of the season. He might have just been making mean stink face out there. Um, <laughs> hey, Dad B threw it out there too. Maybe some Ranger suspensions for the next game. Um, Barclay Goudreau, game misconduct. Oh, yeah. Eh. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Um, so yeah, point being. Shoot, maybe it's a game that we don't judge them too harshly if they lose. I, I do, I am getting a little frustrated with some of the, the notions post game. Like, oh, uh, this is the best team in the league. What are we going to do against Carolina? I don't know. Maybe not get your ass handed to you. It's the NHL. <laughs> like, come on. Um, so it would be nice just to see like this, this team who, who definitely turned it up in Tampa Bay against. We know it. I mean, maybe they're weaker this season, but they definitely were playing like they wanted that game last night with the holding the puck for five minutes and, and the Red Wings were still able to eke one out. So I, I'm i definitely looking at, oh, big surprise there, Matt Rempe. Another game is conduct. Thanks, Jared. Uh, oh, Keandre Miller. All right. Hey, Jacob Truber. All right. All right. Let's, uh, Maybe this is getting easier for us on Friday. Fingers crossed. Is it? How do we look at that? Is it like, oh, they they already got a game as conduct, so we're not going to suspend them? I don't know, Jared. Well, just I, see if I'm, anybody was blading out there. I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> Matt. No, that's this weekend. That's Saturday and Sunday with uh, WrestleMania when we'll see Woo! the blading. Um, shout out to Cody. Shout out to Decoy if you're still out there, but hope you're watching WrestleMania this weekend. Um, but um. I know we did want to hit a few more slides because we had uh, some of the J Fresh um, for this Friday, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's not looking great. Um, the the only thing, and you this were, is normal. You were an octave away from Jiminy Glick on that one. Not looking great. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the, the Wings have their same advantage that they have against every team, right? Five on five goals for and finishing, which does not paint yourself a, a champion um <laughs> it, it never has it never will um <laughs> so you you got to play some defense all right uh <laughs> 22nd goaltending uh pk is now middling we're at 15 uh power play middling we're 15th remember we were like top 10 that was fun um 
yeah, the that goals, was pretty cool. Yeah. Five on five goals against were uh, 28th. The expected goals against were 22nd. Uh, five on five Corsi against uh, 27th. It's just, it's, it's, it's rough. Um, for chances, expected goals going at your opponent. Um, that's all. It's it, same story. Did favor the, the opponent has been all season. We just happened to get more pucks in the back of the net this year than we did last year. Um, that's, you know, that's the scary thing. And then when the power play shrinks down to 15th in the league, um, things just, yeah, they're, they're going to start not going your way. So, what team were we going to be? Um, it'd be nice actually to get these like home and away. Now that I mention it, Jay Fresh, uh, can you give us that? that? That'd be nice. Let's uh, if we could if I could break these down home and away, see what the difference is because um, the Wings definitely are stinkers uh, on the road this year compared to home. Um, what are we're we're like pointless or winless in a uh, uh, after, you know before last night for a while? Somebody help me out. It's uh, Mickey Redmond. Ken, they talk about it all the time. Somebody give me that stat. Um, <laughs> just commentator stats. Yeah. Somebody comment, comment some stats. Um, oh, commentator stats. No, I bet that you talk about it during the goddamn broadcast. Um, but any who's those, I think, I think these, yeah, like these will kind of get spun a little bit closer in our favor. If we could take a look at the, the home side. Uh, but anyway, you know, long story short, We just played average game this year. We get our butts kicked. Um, so yeah, can we get Jeff Petrie saving goals? Can we get David Perron knocking one in and going absolutely nuts against the boards? Can we get some more of that? Um, <laughs> um I will say one thing to uh, kind of keep a fun eye on is uh, the uh, we haven't played the Rangers in a minute. Yeah. Um, last time we did, I think was all the way back in, was it December or November? November. Um, <clears throat> and, um, in both those Ranger games, um, Matt, I don't know if this is surprising, uh, or if he knows the playbook or remembers the playbook, but Andrew Kopp, um, actually had a goal in one game and two assists in the other. Um, and especially with, uh, big Brass, uh, not skating. Um, you know, it looks like he's not going to play Friday. Do we, uh, do we lean on cop Matt and his, his knowledge of the, uh, Rangers infrastructure to once again, pepper that stat sheet, huh? I mean, I'd love to, I was like this close to saying it. Cause I know folks are tired of me ragging on Andrew cop. I was very happy to see folks, uh, commenting on how Ken Daniels, is now noticeably giving Andrew Kopp a hard time during the broadcast. And I was like, thank God, because nobody listens to Matt. So I just watched the games and I'm just like, look at this fool out here with his injured core. Nobody believes me. And now finally get some backup. God. Yeah. It was, uh... deployed like Olimata now and he can't do Jack. Anywho. Yeah. Else. Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, what was I bringing up? Yeah, our road record is, uh, 16, 19, and three. So, I mean, yeah. like a normal sport, it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, 16 and 22. Then at home, we're 21, 11, and five. So, uh, that's pretty good. You know, 21 and 16. Just kind of flipping those numbers there. Um, that's, that's good. I'm, I'm giving them credit for that. I did want you to, uh, no, I know we're, we're, cut, we're getting close. Um, there was one I was going to have you pull up here uh, because, you know, this Red Wing team has so much depth um, and there was no reason for us to make any moves at the deadline. Um, I really like that slide you put together of some production of some guys that we, you know, potentially could have looked into acquiring. Uh, so I do want to make sure you get that slide out there. There <laughs> it is. Yeah, that was this is from a couple of weeks ago, but um that's the that's the sad part, but uh, yeah, Duclair came back a little bit. Gensel came back a little bit. Um, actually, you know what? I know Duclair did. I, I'd have to look at uh, Gensel's numbers because I think after I pulled this, he like had a, a pointless game, but um, just an absolutely pointless game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's look it up, uh, Gensel. Since he got traded to Carolina, sixteen points in eleven games. Um, yeah, and I, I brought this up because I was so angry in the last couple of episodes. Um, 
what I said, 16 points in 11 games, right? Could we have used that? Um, probably. <laughs> well, no, we don't that? have room for that. Man. Uh, it is, it's only two goals. Two goals, 14 assists <clears throat> uh, for Gensel. And then uh, Anthony Duclair, who obviously, you know, you, you could have gotten for a much more affordable uh, trade. So he was at nine points in nine games. How has this gone since? Um, oh, he's only played one more game. Since I pulled that uh, picture, but yeah, nine points in ten games. Um, wait, is he injured now? That would be hilarious to make the argument we should have picked him up, and now he's hurt. He can't um, help injuries, right? But yeah, uh, I don't know. Just one of the. I, 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 just, I brought it. Oh, go ahead. No, I mean just documenting this stuff because it's it's frustrating to watch this team, you know, lose games here towards the finish. <sighs> And I mean, there were options out there and you you do have resources and your pipeline's not that strong. You know, I just wish we weren't, you know, diddling, diddling our own weasels. You know what I mean? Like other people have pretty good weasels, too, that are ready at an NHL level. So hopefully no. uh, all the code names I use there didn't confuse people too much. But weasel diddling. There you go. <laughs> I, I mean, the easiest <laughs> thing in the world is just to say the first line looks great. Um, I would say most of the time. I know Debrinket struggled, but he also hasn't had Larkin for a large part of that month. But when it's Debrinket, Larkin, and Kane, that looks good. And and Debrinket, the goals aren't there, but he's passing. I I gotta say, guys, the passes are on point. He he looks really good. I you know we obviously wish he would have put one in the back of the net in overtime when it was four on three the other night. That just you want to rip your hair out. But he still got it going with with uh, uh, Kane and Larkin. That second line, if it was Gensel and Raymond, you could put any of those dog shit centers between the two of them and you would have seen production. Yeah, these are high caliber centers earning $5 million plus every season. I don't know what you, you mean. You wouldn't pay a bad center $5 million. Of course they're good. Well, maybe one, but not two. <laughs> you wouldn't make that mistake twice. No, not twice. <laughs> um right like that's that's how you solve that problem this wasn't we weren't like the was the expectation really like oh second line solved jt comfers here right i don't Pretty know sure if they he... thought that he was you know a, a, a to bridge the gap between you know our our prospects but uh i don't know which prospect is going to be suddenly vaulted into our second line and I don't know if we have a second line center at this point, but that's a whole other episode, man. Um, but, ooh, I do want to throw this one in there. Jim Johnson saying, just just to let you know, I saw Nate Danielson play last night in Victoria. Portland won six to five. Um, what about specifically for Nate? What did he do? Yeah, how many goals? <clears throat> um, Dan B, we have the league cornered on $5 million centers. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I did want to bring this up and we, we kind of teased it earlier in the episode with, of course, the notion we are just loaded with depth, Mike. We would have no need for more people on this team. There was that it was set. We didn't need to do anything at the trade deadline. Of course, we didn't want to trade anybody either because we were going for the playoffs. So uh, somebody help I, me uh, figure this out. No, um, I do want to say one kidding. comment. Um, yeah. For Jim Johnson, he's saying I'd be surprised if Hall sees ice in the last seven games. Um, Bust. Jim Johnson <laughs> says he's he got zero points. Um, um, our uh, trade deadline players got exactly zero points because uh, we got zero of them. Um, Jim Johnson saying I'd be surprised if Hall sees ice the last seven games. The one thing I I don't uh, I don't really know how to process this, Matt, is. I see a lot with the Detroit Pistons because they're so bad. Um, they're actually, I think, one or two players away from setting the NBA record for most players on one season in one team. Because um, they had a very uh, busy trade deadline, but they've also lost so many man uh, man games like due to an injury, and they've signed so many like 10-day contracts with jabronis. <laughs> that you end up playing these jabronis to see if they have anything to offer you. 
So with Hall and him not playing, I guess as much as this entire, you know, Red Wings rant fan base and the Red Wing fan base, and you and I would like to see this guy moved. I mean, I feel like you got to have a little tape out there for the trade deadline or, you know, for the off season. So it's like you, you have to put him out there a little bit to show that, Hey, he's worth half of a seventh rounder. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think, I, I mean, it just highlights another thing where it's just like, well, yeah, of course nobody wanted him. Um, so then we scroll back to the priest or the, the off season. And it's like, we were all scratching our heads about why did you do this nationally? It was like, why would you do this? Nobody saw that signing and could really justify it. You were really just like, you were justifying it just for the sake of trying to figure it out. You weren't act. Nobody actually believed it was a good signing. So it's, it's just, it's a pickle. It's not a pickle. I think will affect us too far into the future. Um, it's only, God, the cap's supposed to go up. It's 3.4. You know, we can buy out somebody. One of these guys is getting bought out. If we get through the buyout, whatever you call it, session, season, the where there's like waivers and uh, restricted free agents and all that stuff. If we get through that, that little buyout section and we still have Petrie, Hall, Sherratt, <laughs> cop and comfort i i don't know i don't know what the plan is i don't know what we're doing um dan b with a uh shot at the buzzer with uh for comment of the episode saying arizona will take off we pay to fill their soda machines for the next year Woo! dan if that was a veiled money ball reference i love it a lot if it wasn't i still love it but god bless <laughs> And uh, let me clarify, too. I'm not saying all those guys would get bought out. I'm saying if they're all here, then there's a problem. Okay, I said it. One of our, um, man, one of our insider scouts, uh, Jim Johnson, saying Nate um, Danielson, a great skater, no question, definitely a 200-foot player. He had three shots on goal, um, won the majority of his face-offs, and uh, going in this, going for assists in three little minor league playoff games. So that's pretty cool. And Dan B confirming, yes, love Moneyball. Yeah, that's probably one of my like top 20 movies all time. I love that movie. Um, but Matt, is there any other uh kind of focus points you want to hit before we ride off into the sunset today? No, I'm just I'm pulling up Nate. He's got 17 points in his last 10 games played, four goals, 13 assists right now. Um man. Yeah, uh, for the Winter Hawks, 28 games played, 41 points. It's uh, pretty nice. So this is this is kind of if you guys if you guys have been keeping track of Nate. Uh, so right now he's playing with the Winter Hawks. Uh, I'm not sure what happened with the trade here or how he moved, but when he was with the uh, Brandon Wheat Kings as the captain. Both teams in the WHL, he had 26 points in 26 games, but after moving to the Winterhawks, was almost, I mean, like a point and a half per game. And then these these playoff games, three of them so far, yeah, one goal and four assists. Uh, our boy's killing it. Um, I'd say we have enough holes on this team that I, I'm fine. He can, he can come up next year. Obviously... Edvinson's got a full-time job. If you don't see it, you're crazy. Oh, by the way, we could we could at least do this. Let's do one. Let's do one highlight. Um, the one that. Oh, we and to uh, show... Dan also had you. Uh, you have a slide about it that we didn't use, but that 25 year old guy we got the entry level contract. Um, is it Emmett Finney? Oh, he played his first game with the with the Griffins uh, either a night ago or two nights ago. Yeah. Yeah, so this was a, we went over this. this. These are old slides, sorry. See, Mike, this is what happens when you miss an episode. I we don't know, know where, where the slides start and stop. Damn it. Um, our, our seventh round, uh, you say he's 20, he's, he just got drafted. Um, he's a seventh round pick. I mean, yeah, for just so Mike knows everybody, this is huge. <laughs> you don't You don't normally sign your seventh round draft picks. So 
this is uh this is cool and he played his he already played his first game with the griffins which i was so confused by because they were so like no the new contracts for 24 25 season and then there he is playing with the griffins like 10 minutes later i'm like then why why did well, we kind of, twist no, it's our kind nuts like and elite not... he's not quite all elite yet but he's already like showing up on wednesday nights on dynamite you know um Maybe you don't get that reference because you don't watch AEW anymore. That's okay. yeah. Danny Nobody was does. talking about uh, a 25 year old entry level contract. Who's yeah. oh, that's who you were talking about. I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah, Emmett Finney is not that man. Um, I don't know who that uh, entry level contract is. That's okay. Um, sorry guys. Did you did you have one Danny more slide? I'm sorry. Uh no, but I was pulling something up, and now I can't remember what it was. Oh, you know, it's just the Simon Edmondson replay from two nights. Oh ago. no, you had the uh, comparison, I think, uh, for him and Jeff Petrie. Was it that? Are you are you looking at old slides still? Is that in here? Uh, that one was that from last week. Yep, that was from last week. It's okay. All right, I'm learning a lot this week, guys. Looks good. Yeah. Just uh. You know, Petrie's, uh, he, he improved uh, when he was playing with Simon Edmondson. We talked about that. All right, we should wrap up, because now that we're looking at slides from a week ago, I think it's pretty yeah, clear we're we don't have any more. All right. Um, <clears throat> thanks for checking in, guys. Sorry, I have no idea who Dan B's talking about with the 25-year-old. Uh, your your boy, Matt, today had uh, his son with him all day at work, so it was a rough day at work. Um, I know... I, I got to talk to my therapist about this. I actually feel guilty that I'm like not working harder while I have my sick son with me at home. I know. Oh, you should be working less. I know. Uh, but next I time take we talk, day, yeah. uh, next time we talk, my God, what a slate of games we'll have to discuss. Rangers, <sighs> Buffalo, and the game of the century, Capitals. Next Man, we might have to find a way to talk post game after that Capitals game if we have that. Oh, perfect! Yes, let's do that because Matt's going on vacation on Wednesday. Let's go Tuesday night, guys! All right, Tuesday, Tuesday night, night post game. Let's do it. See you later, everybody. Love y'all. Animals, hit that That's like so button and subscribe. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. See after ya. the game of the century. Game of the century. Let's go Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. It's funny because it's, you know, Sunday's WrestleMania. Yeah. All right. See you guys. Bye.